or put pen to paper, I know generally what I'm going to say. And I was, I, I knew there was a reason why Friday had come and I hadn't yet written anything. And then what happened, happened. So God saw fit to hold that off a little while. And if you'll permit me this morning, I would like to address you from the topic, what are you smiling about? I'll be honest with you, it's not an easy time to smile, amen? When two people die at the hands of a gunman while simply doing Christmas shopping, it's not easy to smile. When 28 people are killed senselessly at an elementary school, 20 of whom were children, it's not easy to smile. When 22 children are stabbed to death in China, it's not easy to smile. When your sense of security is shattered, it's not easy to smile. When your bank account is dwindling because you can't find work, it's not easy to smile. When it's the holiday season and you're not sure if you're gonna be able to give your kids a Christmas, it's not easy to smile. When fuel prices are increasing more than your income and winter is coming, it's not easy to smile. When everything about the holidays reminds you of a family that's no longer with you, and especially if you lost them around this time of year, it's not easy to smile. Now, I'll be frank with you. I don't know why difficult things happen. I'm not sure why they happen. I can't give you any definitive answers about why things happen. In fact, I find myself asking God constantly, why? Why do innocent people suffer? What comes over people who recklessly take the lives of others? We all look for answers when things like this happen, and yet if the truth were to be told, answers really wouldn't help us. We'd still be faced with the reality that is before us. Children are still gone. People are still suffering. Answers don't help us. Answers won't return those people to our families. Answers won't return the smiles to our faces. We need something else. Earlier this month, a series of deadly tornadoes hit Alabama. And tornadoes are pretty rare around this time of year. And for that reason, a lot of the residents were caught off guard and a lot of them had no time to hear sirens. They had no time to evacuate to a lower level of their house. One of the, these people who was caught off guard was a man named Clint Thornton. Birmingham, Alabama. Hear him tell his story to a local news affiliate and watch what happens as he tells it. Uh, it was my 
grace of God that uh, he kept us. So, your roof just collapsed. It, it just collapsed. And it's still coming down. It's, it's all. But uh, those things can be replaced. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what does this do to your faith? It gives us a praise like never before. understanding. 
It makes no sense to have that much peace when your house is crumbling around you. Clearly, he was not happy. But where happiness was too frightened to try, joy stepped in. Joy let him know that even though his house was crumbling, even though things were going wrong, it was still okay to praise. Brothers and sisters, it is still okay to praise. No, we don't have answers, but it's still okay to praise. No, we can't make sense of the times we're living in, but it's still okay to praise. No, things aren't ideal right now, but it's still okay to praise. Now see, I'm not very old. That's what I tell myself. I'm not very old, but I've been in Christ and on this earth long enough to know that the enemy does not win by knocking you down. The enemy of your soul does not win by taking your legs out from underneath you. The enemy wins by convincing us to relinquish our joy. The enemy wins by convincing us that things are hopeless, that they're pointless. But the good news is you don't have to give the enemy your joy just because he asks for it. When times are bad, Rejoice when they're good. Rejoice when you get what you want. Rejoice when you don't have much, but you have everything you need. Rejoice when tragedy strikes. Rejoice when you're in a position to help someone who's in trouble. Rejoice when you don't have the means to help them, but you can pray for them. Rejoice. Rejoice knowing that God is still sovereign. Rejoice knowing that God still sees. Rejoice knowing that our Lord is still coming to us at all times. Rejoice knowing that he will come again and straighten all this out. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. It's okay to rejoice. It's appropriate to rejoice. It's appropriate to keep smiling despite what's going on around you, despite people wondering what you're smiling about. Happiness may not always find you, but joy will if you hold on to it. Nobody else has to understand it, but hold on to it. Nobody else has to agree with it, but hold on to it. The enemy will not win this one. We will not relinquish our joy simply because of the ugliness we face. Our joy is not that fragile. Our God is not that fragile. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, rejoice. Amen. Oh, gracious God. <clears throat> Lord, we don't have answers for the questions that we have, and yet we rejoice. Lord, we can't make sense of the evil in this world. We can't make sense of the senselessness around us, but we don't need to. We can still rejoice. Lord, we thank you that over 2,000 years ago, you sought to put off glory and come to us in the flesh and be Emmanuel, God with us. And so now as we wait for you to be with us, open our eyes to where you are because Lord, it's hard to see sometimes. And yet Lord, give us the grace to always rejoice despite how we might feel, despite what things might look like, Give us the grace to rejoice. And as for people who had their worlds rocked this week by the events in Connecticut, by the events in Oregon, by the events in China, by the nameless and faceless events all over the world, Lord, we ask for your joy in the midst of that sorrow. 
Lord, where answers can't sustain them, let your joy sustain them because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Lord, we desperately need your strength right now. Despite what it looks like, we trust you. Despite what it looks like, we love you. And despite what it looks like, we have joy in you. Thank you for that sustaining joy. Amen. Let us now respond to our God.